What up, Wizards? It's Dev and Igby's down here. Sharp-eyed viewers might notice. We're from SBMTG. We like it a magic. And it is day two of Murders at Karlov Manor preview season. We have all made it here together, surviving, thriving, and alive. But there's a lot to talk about, so I guess we should dive in. Now, we'll start the day with some lower rarity disguise stuff, like Culvert Ambusher and Shady Informant. Now, Ambusher is five mana, three and two green for a four, five worm horror. You gotta love that. When it enters the battlefield or is turned face up, target creature blocks this turn if able, and you can disguise it for four and a green. Now, yeah, this doesn't look like anything too special at first glance and I'll admit that's because it is not but I should at least bring it up because I feel like there's a chance this ends up being a somewhat important card in limited hear me out we haven't seen a whole lot of lower rarity disguise creatures that are capable of flipping up and blowing out combat interactions with other face down creatures and I know it costs a whole five mana to do that in limited and it sounds like a lot but we're used to that they're basically just still following the rule of five mana from Cons of Tarkir Limited, which I feel like I'm going to be bringing up an awful lot this preview season. But with all that in mind, let's look at another disguise guide. Shady Informant, 5 mana, 3 a black and a red for a 4-2 Ogre Rogue, and when it dies, it deals 2 damage to any target. You can disguise it for 2 and 2 red-black hybrids. Now, I'm not going to throw too much shade at this guy, but I will say that a total of 7 mana to get it cloaked and then flipped up is way too much, but it can do some cool stuff in Limited for you. It's going to be really difficult to run this guy into combat or to block with him and have him survive that interaction, but you're probably going to trade with whatever ran up against him in combat, and you might even be able to kill something else small over there on the other side of the table. Perhaps a face-down creature could be. So I like this thing, right? Sometimes it's going to effectively be a two-for-one, but you got to plug a lot of mana into it to do that some of the time. But Wizard sure did spoil us for lower rarity disguise stuff this morning, so let's also take a look at Undercover Cross. Crocodelf <laughs> and Fairy Snoop up next. Now, undercover Crocodelf, <laughs> more like Crocodilf. That's a handsome guy. But anyway, this is six mana for a green and a blue for a 5-5 five, five elf crocodile detective. Man, the Simic are still getting up to some weird experiments, aren't they? But anyway, when it deals combat damage to a player, you get to investigate. You disguise for five mana. That's three and two Simic hybrids. This seems pretty nice when they just let it through, right? Because, you know, it's just a 2-2. Who cares? I'm not taking that chance. I'll take that damage. Come right this way, sir. And then suddenly you get to investigate and you take a quarter of their life total away. That's a pretty big bite. But easily the best of these disguise pieces today is Fairy Snoop. This is three mana, one, a blue, and a black for a 1-4 fairy detective with flying. And disguise one and two Demir hybrids. When Fairy Snoop is turned face up, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Uh, just like everything else that we've looked at so far today, all three other cards that we've looked at, I really don't think this is anywhere close to standard playability. I want to make that very clear. None of these disguise things we've really seen so far excite me that much in my format of choice, but they all look pretty sweet and limited, and this is absolutely no exception, right? The disguise cost to actually flip it up in the first place is relatively cheap compared to what we've seen. Also kind of cool to see a disguise guy at a lower rarity with flying, because if your opponent swings in, you can just flip it up, get your card, trade with their guy, you feel good about that interaction, but I also like the fact that it, like, when your opponent passes turn, you can just pay the mana, flip it up, get your card, and have a 3-1 flyer to swing in with if you're in the driver's seat. So all of that looks really good. This looks like a fantastic card in the limited environment. I also will not rest until I get an alternate art of this card where it's like Snoop Dogg with wings or something like that. That would be funny. But anyway, let's move on to Magmatic Snuffler. I nailed it. I always want to say, I always want to say Shuffler when I read this card because... Magic player brain disease. But anyway, this is five mana for a 4-4 artifact creature, which is a construct. And when it ETBs, return target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to Snuffler. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on Snuffler. Five mana is too much for this. Let's be honest. Again, this won't see any constructed play basically anywhere unless maybe commander is there, is there like a commander deck that actually kind of wants this it could be five minutes still like way too much in most actual applications but in limited it's all right especially if you're able to draft up a bomb piece of equipment or something like that you can make sure that you get it back if it ever went to the graveyard if you milled it or something like that this actually goes kind of nicely with the last card <laughs> fairy snoop you know you can put an equipment into your graveyard with the with that ability and then 
get the equipment out of your graveyard, attach it straight to this. I don't know. Somebody's going to do it in limited at some point. It's a nice line. But either way, nice little thing for limited in that it's a five and a four, four that any deck can play, which is kind of a decent little baseline in terms of stats. But it's only going to get bigger as you sacrifice clues and other things like it. In limited, I think it's mostly just going to be clues, <laughs> right? So if you get this thing to a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7, seven, seven, it is definitely big enough for the mana cost. And I guess if you want to try to do fun stuff and construct it, like, you know, throw a Colossus hammer in your yard and then throw it onto this guy when he eats TV, you know, knock yourself out, it might be fun. But I think it's a little bit too cute. That said, actually a fairly solid card in limited where it's going to beat 90% of the creatures in the set just because 90% of the creatures it played in limited in the set are going to be face down two twos. But let's move on to Under City Eliminator here. Five mana, three and two black for a three, three Gorg an assassin when an etbs you may sacrifice an artifact or creature when you do exile target creature and opponent controls baby i like a necrotal i do i love me anything a necrotal a ravenous chupacabra there's like a million a shriek maw there's a thousand creatures like this and i love basically all of them this dude is almost no exception i want to love him but again five mana is just so much and three three is not the best stat line in the world but in limited you're gonna play this guy basically every time that you get it because a body that blows up a creature when it etbs is always going to be good you gotta do some work i acknowledge that but there's a clue on just about every card in this set there's just clues everywhere i'm getting a raging clue right now just looking at this card so i imagine it's going to be fairly easy to get this thing fueled but we are already into the rares everybody and white got some really good stuff today i gotta say let's start with assemble the players this is two mana one and a white for an enchantment you may look at the top card of your library anytime once each turn, you may cast a creature spell with power two or less from the top of your library. What's this green card doing in my white cards? You know, I guess if it was a green card, it would be power four or greater or something like that rather than two or less, you know, but still pretty good. It might not be as good as it looks at first glance, you know, like in constructed, no matter what format you're playing, you have to like waste your turn to. And hopefully you get it as early as turn two. But, you know, you waste an early turn playing this. And then next turn, you might not even get any value off of it. Like, I guess I guess you get to look at the top card of your library and know that you're going to fail ahead of time. And that's going to be probably disheartening just a little bit. But, you know, a lot of the times, let's say, too, there's this awkward situation. That you have this on turn two and then you have a turn three play that takes all three of your mana. You know what I mean? But on the top of your library, on the next turn, when you untap after you draw just happens to be a two drop so now what do you do do you play your three drop and use all your mana or do you play the two drop from the top of your library what do you, which one of those things do you do it's actually it's a good kind of problem to have but it's also like a little bit awkward and there's going to be a bunch of turns where it's just sitting on the board like a dead grapefruit it's just like it doesn't do anything if there's not if there's like a land on top of your library, which is going to happen like at least a third of the time. So I just, I want to really, really like this. And I think that it's a sweet commander playable card. It's going to be good in any creature based deck that can churn through its library fairly well. But, you know, a lot of slots in your deck are going to be taken up by not two power or less guys a lot of the time. You know, especially if you're running four copies of this. That's at least four not two power or less guys <laughs> that are in your deck so i'm not actually sure that it's as good as i want it to be i think again there's a lot of things that are awkward about it but you know just another day another sort of white pseudo card draw piece and this could be a pretty good one in certain formats edh this could be good in edh let's check out unyielding gatekeeper next this is two mana one and a white for three two elephant cleric with disguise one and a white when unyielding gatekeeper is turned face up Exile another target non-land permanent. If you controlled it, return it to the battlefield tapped. Otherwise, its controller creates a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. Who Sally, that one's pretty good right there. It's got a lot of tricks. When you flip it up, you can save one of your dudes from removal or combat interaction or something like that. Or you can just blow up whatever you want. Just whatever you want. It doesn't it does not matter. You know, just blow something up on the other side of the table. And then they get a paltry 2-2. <laughs> 
in exchange, which I don't think is going to be worth it to them every time that you do it. Now, I will say that I have some reservations about a card like this in standard. It still costs the three mana to get down, you know, a 2-2 two, two, ward 2 in the first place, which is just not a very good deal in standard right now. And then on subsequent turns, you have to keep the two mana up in order to flip it up. And even if you do flip it up and take out one of your opponent's important permanence like a planeswalker or something like that you are still leaving behind some amount of value for them when you could have just played a removal spell or something like that a brutal cathar or something like that right but all things considered i do think this has an awful lot going for it again the fact that it can be used as protection which other things can you know things like where fox bodyguard i think it's called that can also be protection it hasn't done a whole lot yet in standard with its time so and that has flash, but again, the spread of versatility and the relatively decent body is all right. But the last couple of new cards of the day today are juiced. These are ridiculous looking cards to me, man. So let's take a look at Intrude on the Mine next. This is five mana, three and two blue for an instant. Reveal the top five cards of your library and separate them into two piles. Stop me if you've heard this one before. An opponent chooses one of those piles. Put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Create a 0-0 colorless thopter artifact creature token with flying. Then put a plus one plus one counter on it for each card put into your graveyard this way. Factor Fiction with a crack addiction, man. This thing's got bloodshot eyes and super strength. Just look at it. It's instant speed. Why'd they make it instant speed? It looks like it could be a sorcery, but then it would just be an awful card. At instant speed, it's actually kind of stupid that it exists i really don't think that's too much mana i think some people are gonna be like no oh, yawn five mana but no nah, at instant speed in your control deck or something i think this has so much to do number one let's just assume that you play this during your opponent's combat step you know they come in on you because you don't have any creatures except oh my goodness i do have a creature so you get at least a one one flyer which is important to block just about anything that they're coming in with and you might get a bigger creature than that now i will say they do get some control over the size of creature that you get, but you might, you know, bluff them into a really bad situation where they just like, well, I'm going to give you a one, one flyer that I don't want you to have a big flyer. And you're like, okay, thanks for the four cards. I just drew kid. <laughs> wow. All right. That makes me feel pretty good. But in most situations, you're going to get a two, two or a three, three flyer off of this plus card advantage at instant speed. So, you know, there's going to be times where you can trade with an opponent's creature in combat, or at the very least, just stave the bleeding for a turn while you get some card advantage and find the sweeper or the card that wins you the game or the wandering emperor or whatever it is that you're looking for. I would imagine that in control decks, this is probably better than silver scrutiny, like nine times out of nine and a half, you know, it's just, and a lot of control decks will already play Silver Scrutiny, which is a pretty good card, don't get me wrong, but in most cases, this is going to draw you as many, and some cases, more cards in Silver Scrutiny, while also putting a body on the table, it's technically a win condition, you gotta factor that in too, it's just, I really, really like this card, and I haven't actually seen that many people talking about it today, which is nuts, because I know you get the reference. Do you just go like, no, it's five mana, it's bad. I think you're wrong. I actually think this card, I think you're wrong, dude. I think this card is actually subtly, or maybe even not so subtly, one of the better cards we've seen so far from the whole set. But, oh, you just haven't seen anything to get you hype yet, have you? Let's take a look at Delany Streetwise Lookout. Turn that frown upside down. This is three mana. Two and a white for a 2-2 Legendary Human Scout. Creatures you control with power two or less can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. Hey, guess what? There's more text on this card. Uh, there doesn't necessarily need to be, but there is. If an ability of an, a creature you control with power two or less triggers, that ability triggers. Again, stop me if you've heard this one an additional time. Okay, pulling out the notebook for this one because even though I've already done a little thread on Twitter with all like the grossest stuff you can do in each color in standard right now with this card. And by the way, thanks Judge for answering one of my questions. I was like, welcoming vampire? But no, apparently, apparently can't always trumps can. So even though it looks like you might be able to get around the once per turn qualifier on a card like Welcoming Vampire, you apparently can't. I learned something today. I wasn't sure, but now I am. Anyway, like I said, if you want to follow me on Twitter at this Twitter address, then you can do that if you want to see a bunch more cards in standard that this works with. But I basically just picked my favorite 
one from each color you can do gross stuff with. And we'll talk about it just slightly in this video. Let me just say that in white, Sanguine Evangelist is kind of a neat one because not only do you double up both the ETB and dies triggers, but I'm pretty sure you double up the battle cry trigger too, which is just disgusting. In blue, there's a lot of like, probably actually competitively viable stuff like Fairy Mastermind, whatever. I like Unctus. I know it's a card not a whole lot of people play, but being able to double up that attacks trigger or whatever it is and just like draw a million cards. I don't care if you have to discard cards too. You get to draw every card in your deck if you just attack with a couple of creatures. That feels pretty good. In black, I really like Preacher of the Schism with this. To be honest, there's not a whole lot of creatures in black that I really like with this card, which I feel is weird because I really black's my favorite color. <laughs> all the time and I just can't really think of too many things that I like in black with this dude but Preacher of the Schism Preacher of the Schism that's a good one Red has a couple of interesting ones like Charming Scoundrel whatever but Voldaren Thrillseeker is probably the most exciting one doubling up a backup trigger uh, we're talking a green has the fewest creatures that I'd like to point out with a card like this but it has one of the cooler ones I could point out period and that's Venerated Rod Priest probably Probably not good enough, but still actually uh, terrifying, right? You see these two cards together and you're like, oh, that works. That's bad. That's not, I don't know why my stomach hurts all of a sudden. And I guess if I had to pick a gold creature that I thought might be kind of good with this Rafine, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Come on. It seems pretty ridiculous. And like both of them slot directly into the Esper Legends deck. We're just like, you know, the subterranean schooner, like Esper mid-range thing that's going to play Rafine. Anyway, you know, like I guess if Rafine gets to three power or more by conniving or whatever, then suddenly it doesn't work. But remember that Rafine just works whether you swing with it or not. So if you keep Rafine's power at two or less, then suddenly it's going to double trigger. This ability will double trigger and suddenly you win the game. I'm pretty sure you can just ask your opponent if they want to go home and maybe cook some ramen or something, watch some TV. They'll probably just agree at that point because it's just an absolutely disgusting interaction. Now, before we get out of here today, I promised you that we'd look at the bonus sheet and a commander that I thought was really cool, which is not something we often do, but I really like the look of Morska Undersea Sleuth. This is just Bant colors, three mana, a green, a white, and a blue. Simple as that for a 2-3 legendary Vidalkin Fish Detective. Wow. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put two plus one plus one counters on the undersea sleuth here. So for a pretty small fee of just three mana, you not only get the two, three body, obviously, but you also get like a thought vessel or a library of Ling or whatever reference you understand for no maximum hand size. It's usually worth some value, especially in a deck that wants to draw cards and well, would you look at that? You get a free investigate on every single one of your turns, which is kind of good enough, especially considering, again, three men is not a whole lot to invest in this thing. But the real magic comes in when you realize that you don't have to like pop clues to draw extra cards every turn. It's actually really easy in this color combination, especially to draw your entire deck <laughs> very, very quickly. You'll want to space things out, but do note that you can put the two counters on them on your turn, say go, and then put two more counters on them. And when that player says go, you can put two more counters on them on the next player's turn. So this thing can get out of control size-wise relatively quick and go from the two, three, it starts life as to a four, five, and then a six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. You can just actually keep going like that, right? 12, 13, so <laughs> checks out. But this guy, again, gets really, really big, really, really fast in most games of Commander, I assume, because, you know, Cards are flying everywhere. But as promised, let's end this little shindig, this this hoot nanny, by looking at some cards from the bonus sheet, everybody. This batch was previewed yesterday afternoon, and I never really got to it, but I am excited about this set's bonus sheet. This time, they're called Special Guests. As usual, these can show up in packs, and although they're not standard legal, you can play them in draft when you open them, and that's going to lead to some real fun situations, like getting a show-and-tell and jamming it into your deck. This is, uh, by far, the most high profile reprint that we've seen off this bonus sheet so far and again gonna be pretty awesome to be able to play this in limited occasionally but if anything it's also going to be nice to bring down the price of a show and tell a little bit but even though this bonus sheet is shaping up to look nice it's not all bangers like show and tell we got some 
kind of less impactful stuff that I nonetheless think is cool. You know, Drown in the Lock and Tragic Slip are on this bonus sheet with cool new art. These are sought after cards. Tin Commander to some extent. It's fairly easy to find a copy, but Cube players also love both of these as decent sources of removal. We also got some other stuff like Fabricate, Tireless Tracker, and Victimize, one of my personal favorites on the bonus sheet so far. Victimize goes in basically all of my Commander decks because they all just happen to run Swamps. I like Swamps, so <laughs> Victimize is in an awful lot of my decks, and it's going to be cool to have the chance of getting like a bonus sheet special art version of it. It's a card I like a lot, and it's powerful too. Fabricate, maybe in some ways not quite as powerful, but a completely different card aside from the three mana casting cost. Either way, a tutor, always kind of nice, but not that special, right? Tireless Tracker, a little bit more special. And while we're talking about cube, like we were just a second ago, this is another really important card for people's cubes. They tend to love playing it there, but there's a lot of places you can play Tireless Tracker. It's pretty decent commander, I hear. There's some other cool stuff on this bonus sheet too, though, like Field of the Dead showed up as well as Ghostly Prison. I like both of these cards. I just have fond memories of Field of the Dead while it was in Standard. I don't care that it got banned. I still love it. And as far as Ghostly Prison goes, yes, basically any propaganda effect I'm going to be a fan of. And finally, let's finish off what we know of the bonus sheet so far, at least, with the second most high-profile reprint <laughs> that we've seen so far, and that is Gamble. Gamble's here. It's that red demonic tutor that uh, doesn't work half the time. And for me, it doesn't work like 70% of the time. So I'm not actually a huge fan of Gamble, but a lot of people are. Well, all right, everybody. I've performed reloads of all the major spoiler sites, and it appears as though we have covered all of the cards released today up to now. But some of you might be thinking, hey, man, that's not all the cards. Uh, you missed some cards. Actually, I didn't miss cards. You missed a video. I'm actually really on top of it so far, the spoiler season. Hopefully it stays that way. But, you know, I mentioned a coffee break video earlier, and I think some people in the audience are going to be like, what's he talking about? Uh, basically, earlier this morning, I released a video that's mostly all a coffee break. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you know what that means. If you don't, you might be intrigued. Click on the video. I left a link in the description to that video from this morning where we talked about like five or six different cards that were released overnight. So if you're missing a few cards from this video, that's probably where they are. Again, I'll link them in the description for you. But with that, we are Donsky Nikki Blonsky. Do you remember her? She played Tracy Turnblatt in 2007's adaptation of Hairspray. That was actually a pretty good movie whatever happened to her she was great but either way that's it for this one we're done with previews for today at least we're probably going to do at least two more weeks of these so make sure you're subbed to the channel if you haven't done it yet we're trying to get to 150 baby we're at a buck 50 in terms of subscribers we're good we're on the way there we just need like 18 or 19 thousand more subs that's actually not too far away i'm going to keep doing this pitch until you do it, just sub to the channel so you get all the content. Not only spoiler stuff in your notifications and your recommended feed. Don't you want that? You don't want to have to come to YouTube every day and be like, SBMTG. No, just like sub to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'll just be there in your recommended feed. You'll be happy about that. Unless you don't like me. In which case, why are you watching all the way this far into a video? Thanks, but watch time is good, but either way, that's more or less all I got. Just let me know how you felt about all the stuff down there in the comments section, because there's not a whole lot today, but we did get to see some solid stuff. Delny, man, I'm telling you, I really didn't get to say everything I wanted to say about that little street urchin. That seems like a ridiculous magic card, man. Like, not only a really, really good commander to brew around, I think people are going to be excited about that, but, you know... A little, a little panharmonicon, a little, a little fella, a little rascal that's also kind of a panharmonicon. <laughs> Come on, I don't know, man. It seems really fun. Even in standard, it looks like it's got some broken stuff to do. Have we gone back to talking about this card? Is that how much I like it? But who did we make it? Are we safe? I think we are. We are finally officially out of the loop where I just talk about Delny over and over again for an hour and a half. So let's just finish this video off like I originally intended before I start doing that again. Just on your way out before you hit the lights. Hit the likes. That's it's not even clever. Why do I still say that? But you can also pitch in a dollar a month if you want to on the Patreon. Link in the description to that. A dollar a month helps more than you can possibly imagine. And if everybody that watches these videos pitched in a dollar, we would be the best YouTube channel on the whole website. Not just magic YouTube. The best. Do you have any idea what we'd be doing on this channel if everybody pitched in a dollar a month? It would be nuts. But even if you can't afford to do that... and. It, I totally understand your perspective. I too am broke. So if you can't afford to do that, don't worry. I'm just glad that you're here watching the videos. It helps and it means a lot. But that is officially Allski Kowalski. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am Deb from The Place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.